Well, on that note, <clears throat> we'll talk about climate. Let me get my glasses on. Go for it. <clears throat> so here I am, age 14, in Nigeria with my family. My father, um, he, was, um, he was a leprosy doctor, and we were there uh, on a visit with some friends, my big brother, my two sisters, my mother and father. And that's when I first started taking measurements of uh, um, air temperature and rainfall. And when I was in high school, we went on a, on, a, on a geology field trip to the North Norfolk coast, which you see in the blue dot on the map at, on the right-hand side. And I noticed the chalk was pushed right up into the sandy cliffs. Why was that? Well, uh, in college, I learned that, that the, the ice came over a whole of, all of England. After college, I went to the Bahamas uh, to um, help, uh, joined a team investigating groundwater supply. On every beach, I noticed that footsteps in the sand above mid-tide level show most clearly. Why is that? So here's, <clears throat> it's because of air trapped between sand grains. This rock is from a beach ridge from the last warm period between ice ages, 125,000 years ago. However, it was found 20 feet above present sea level. Wow, that's climate change. Following grad school, I got a job as a professor of geology at the University of, of, of Libya. In the Sahara, I came across these cave paintings drawn during the Ice Age. They show cattle and, and giraffes in what is now a desert landscape. Climate change again. Back to the Bahamas, we see a blue hole filled with salt water. Divers find it, found it to be 400 feet deep, but it's a limestone cave system cut by fresh water. That indicates that worldwide sea level was once 400 feet lower. Where did all that ocean water go? Here's the answer. During the ice ages, during the last ice age, parts of North America, Greenland, Northwest Europe were covered by miles of ice. All that ice lowered sea level worldwide. Whoa. <clears throat> and then I... And, and oh, by, by the way, I should say that right where I was sitting uh, and now, there was once a mile of ice over our heads. And then I came to Maine. This is Bubble Rock on Mount, Mount Desert Island. It's one of many huge boulders moved by an ice sheet across the landscape and dumped. So tell the guy that these rocks don't budge easily. Okay? <laughs> After grad school, I came across Milutin Milankovic. He calculated that subtle variations in Earth's orbit around the sun, you see the top one, the axial tilt and its axial wobble were enough to cause the natural climate changes of the ice ages. Whoa, what a calculation. In 1980, I got a gig preparing a weekly weather log for the Morning Sentinel, plus a popular science column. In this one, on January 13th, 1983, I recorded a morning temperature of minus 19. Will we ever see that again? <laughs> <clears throat> Not according to James Hansen, NASA's chief scientist. Here he is in 1987 informing the U.S. Senate that human-caused climate change was something very real, caused principally by carbon emissions from burning fossil fuels. How so? Well, here's Charles David Keeling. He started to measure carbon dioxide monthly on the top of Mauna Loa, Hawaii, far from smokestacks and tailpipes. His measurements show that CO2 in the air is now 47% higher than before the industrial age. Whoa. <laughs> Has that made a difference? Yes, according to Michael Mann. His hockey stick graph <clears throat> of, 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 of temperatures over the last 1,000 years, you see across there, clearly show that it has. Starting in about 1850, when the Industrial Age really got going, the temperatures started going up. Need evidence? How about the increasing incidence of wildfires, not only in California, but all over the world? Now nearly four times as common, burning over six times the land area, and lasting five times as long compared to four decades ago. 
Whoa. No, these are not sharks gathering near Houston. Instead, they are the tail fins of Delta jets at Houston Airport during the floods that accompanied Hurricane Harvey in 2017. Whatever, next. No, this is not a modern art um, 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 show. The photo comes from India, where at one point the temperature exceeded 125 degrees Fahrenheit and melted the striped tarmac. Another expensive um, show that our current human-caused climate change is very real. So I joined Citizens Climate Lobby. We, from all over the country, meet regularly with all members of Congress, and here I am <laughs> with Senator Collins and other people from Maine in 2015 to urge her to take action on climate change. You can join that effort too. You can sign up right outside if you like. <laughs> At the tail end of 2018, we were rewarded with bipartisan sponsorship of the Energy, Innovation, and Carbon Dividend Act, introduced in both in the House, the top guys, and, 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 and Senate, and reintroduced yesterday. Bipartisanship is good. And here are the four people that we Mainers, that's you and me, must urge to co-sponsor the Energy, Innovation, and Carbon Dividend Act and see that it becomes law this year. Say after me, Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act, okay? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Finally, my, my, excuse me, two grandsons are the two reasons why I keep, keep doing the work I do. Felix already knows more about dinosaurs than anybody else in this room, and Callan <laughs> is getting to know how friendly dogs are. <laughs> 